Peace and blessings, everybody. We're going to get started in a few minutes. Thank y'all so much for checking out Bravo to Alive on a rainy Saturday here in Central VA. I mean, it is raining all day today, a little slow down a little bit, you know, and I, last couple of days it was sunny. I thought we were done with the rain, but they said after tonight, we're supposed to be done with the rain for the rest of the week coming up. And I think Friday the rain returns, but that'll be enough time for me to do some things in the backyard, you know. So just wait right here, everybody. We're getting ready to come up. Start up in just a few minutes. We got a good show, okay? Somebody said some musical rhythm can mess with your head. I don't know. T-L-A-R-O-C-K Said from now on has to be prearranged. Stand by, everybody. Stand by. Okay, everybody, stand by. We got DJ Divine as our guest tonight, everybody, and a couple others want to come in. So we're going to get ahead and get started in just a few seconds. DJ Divine, if you're there, hey, we're getting ready to hit you in a few seconds, my brother. Thank you so much for being here. This is going to be a great show, everybody, so you make sure you keep it right here. Share. Share the post, everybody. Share the live of Bravo to Alive.
Peace and blessings, everybody. Thank y'all so much for being here for Bravado Live. We got a great show for you this evening, everybody. Yes, we do. We're going to be talking about some of Hip Hop 50, but we're going to be talking about it from the Queen standpoint. We're going to be talking about equipment and everything. I have my guest right now. I got my man, DJ Cricket. What's going on, Cricket? What's up, homie? How you doing? Great Thanks. to see you, man. Thanks. And I go. have the legendary, the legendary DJ Divine of the Infinity Machine from Queens, New York. Brother, thank you so much. What's up, bro? What's up? Thank you so much for joining us. I've been trying to get you for the longest time. I know it's been last minute with me, but we want to thank you for taking your time right now to be with us. Thank you so much. How you been? I've been good. I've been good in yourself, man. I've, I've been, been doing pretty well, pretty well. You know, we last time uh, when we met some uh, about three, three, four years ago, uh, when I was doing the filming with Davey DMX, you were um, giving me some jewels about Queens hip hop. And you were very passionate about what you all were doing way back. And I kind of want to touch on some of that if we can, but also want to touch on the sound systems, uh, because as you can see, I have another brother here with us. That's DJ Cricket. He is with us when we do a lot of our, our block party jams, which we got from you all up there. We got got them from you. And what we do is a reflection of what you guys did up in New York and, and in Queens and with the, the sound systems, uh, new sounds, the infinity machine that you and Ken do have and. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, you know, you can throw in some names if you like. So let's just start there. The sound systems. What was Queens doing during this time? You know, we got 50 years of hip hop, but Queens was doing some things, too, you were telling me. Oh, of course, man. Um, Queens, because of the people that live in Queens, we was homeowners. So we had space to put our speakers. So, you know, everybody... Um, which is which is really one of the most important elements of anything if you got a good sound system you're going to get a lot of people to come so queen was definitely known for the sound system back okay in the, back in the 70s you know and in the 80s and so forth and so on when hip-hop started to really take off okay now Back in those days, of course, you didn't call it hip hop. It was just like park jams and things of that nature, right? Right. It was just park jams. It was like young people coming out, dancing, having a good time, socializing. And 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 that's what really birthed this thing they call hip hop. Right. You know, um nobody knew that it was gonna go as far as it went. <laughs> and um again it was music i say mu hip-hop the beginning stages of hip-hop was music that was attractive to young people right you know so the music that we play and the music that we played in the park it attracted young people and and they was able to express themselves through dance and some of them got on the mic and said a couple of things you know now coming from when you're saying people got on the mic uh, if you can name some of the people that were out there during that time that we know of that may have been on record or what have you and some that we may not have known of. Okay, well, you have uh, DJ Woody Wood. Um, he was, he he basically said all Hollywood rhymes. Um, you had his brother, Disco Kid. And and I'm saying from a Jamaica, South Southside Jamaica, Queens perspective, I'm not saying that, that that they was the only ones, but I'm saying in my neighborhood, you had uh, DJ Sure Shot, you had Freaky T, you had Wildcat, you had Groovy Lou, MC Goody, I also MC. So, you know, um, the DJs, some of the DJs also got on the mic and, you know, it wasn't no, he's a DJ or he's an MC. You know, you just get on the mic and just have the people uh, respond and just have them rock to whatever you said. Wow. Okay. Okay. Now, you said you used to rhyme as well, which, you know, we know you're famous for your record, Get Into the Mix, you know, and but that was you and Spider D, correct? No, that was a lot. Of, a lot of people thought that that was Spider D. Spider D and I had how our voices were similar. 
because we mm-hmm. hung together. So we kind of like, um, I fed off of him and he fed off of me, but he was an MC and I was a DJ and I just, you know, used to, he said, just make something simple, get into the mix. And it was just a simple thing with cutting and, and scratching. But Spider wasn't able to uh, do any rap on it because he was signed with other labels. I mean, near the end of the record, I said, yo, Spider, yo, look at that girl over there, man. She getting into the mix. That's the only time the Spider said said something more besides that, Argh. you know, <laughs> but as far as rapping, um, and it was, it was just a, it was a cut record. It was just, it, I, I don't even consider that as being a rap record. I consider that as being um, a DJ scratch record that, you know, that Weston wanted to, to do something like that. And Spider said he knew somebody to DJ and, and it, it never started off the way it ended, man. That, that record started off with Sesamato. And Sesamato, the beat on Sesamato is nothing like what we came up with in the studio, in Power Play Studio. Right. You know? Okay. The world famous Power Play Studio. That's all right. That's all right. Now, uh, some of the other people, uh, like I I called out new sounds. Uh, I'm thinking uh, Pete DJ Jones. I saw right. the documentary that uh, Sonny Hassan did called Founding Fathers. It was on YouTube and it's still on YouTube. Yes. And as a matter of fact, Sonny contacted me some years ago when I did my uh, film festival, uh, my first one. He said he'd like to uh, have it in. There. I told him, yeah, but for some reason, we just never could connect to get it, make it happen. And I'm still looking for the next film festival. Maybe we could get him to do that because I think that's a documentary that everyone, if you haven't seen it, you need to see it because I learned so much about Queens uh Mm -hmm. uh, hip-hop that i didn't know and especially then after meeting you and talking to you off camera about some of the things that you all did it blew my mind you know it it really did now we know what davy dmx did with one for the trouble but then of course what you did with uh get into the mix it's just and you were just saying well it's just so much more we stayed in our neighborhood and we did these things also around these times so i think it's important that people hear from someone like yourself uh, being maybe you could say the ambassador for Queens hip hop, especially in the early days, because I feel that it, if you're going to tell a story, you got to tell the whole story, you know, and, and right. this is not slighting anyone else, but this is to add to that story that's going on right now, because I'm not hearing about the DJs. I'm not hearing about uh, Queens hip hop. Like it should be. If you had uh Pete DJ Jones mixing in, in 68, I, I need to know. I want to know about it. You know, I want to know about these things that were going on back then when we down here weren't hearing that. You know, we weren't hearing those things. So you you you, you see where I'm coming from. So that's the importance, I think, of you you telling the story briefly as best as you can. You know, with us right now. You know what I mean? Right, like P. D. J. Jones, Grandmaster Flowers. These are the guys that 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 laid the foundation and really draw the people out to come hear them play it in, in parks or in, in clubs and so forth and so on. And um, New Sounds. New Sounds was uh, the group that influenced Michael Goody to buy all these speakers, you know, the, all the Vegas stuff, because he wanted to be just as loud as New Sounds. New Sounds, to me, was uh one of the best groups that i saw as i was growing up into um becoming a dj and then you know making the transition into uh hip-hop and so forth and so on new sound sound system was impeccably clean and loud you know and these guys knew how to mix but again they mixed and then they had JD on the mic that you know rap, and again, the uh, how hip hop progressed. You had different style of rappers that come in and so forth and so on. And to say that it it kind of like started some place is is kind of it's kind of hard for me to embrace it because of the simple fact of who I was influenced by and who. I I watched and how Goody built this sound system that a lot of people came and played and and Fantasia was the proving ground in South Jamaica 
for whoever was whoever. So it's, it, I wasn't influenced by anybody outside of my neighborhood to say, you know, um, everybody has someone they, 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 they see and they're influenced by, it, and then they say that, um, this is a person that, that started them and so forth. And then it goes down the chain. And then you, you come up with great artists like a Grandmaster Flash, a Theodore, you come up with great artists like, uh, Big E, and you come up with great artists like Brock Kim, you know, everybody, if you, if you, if when, when you create something, everybody is, sounds basically the same because you created a particular style of rap. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the beginning part of hip hop, everybody was different. So it's to tell you that everybody wasn't influenced by one person. So when you look at this new rap that they have here, everybody basically, to me, sounds almost the same. Right. And they has do. almost the same style. Right, right. But in the beginning of hip hop, when you look at Houdini, you look at Curtis Blow, you look at um, Grandmaster Cash, you look at the, uh, Fantastic Romantic, you look at all these guys, everybody had a different style so that means that <laughs> people was not influenced by one influencer to say right right you know, right because now, everybody go ahead no 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 finish what you were saying right there just just finish i want you to finish I, i'm trying i don't want to interrupt you because this is good stuff here so i want you to finish what you're saying because i always say that if you was influenced by someone you would sound like John. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay. That thing. Great. 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 We got Chris Brooks on the line as well. Chris, what's going on, man? Finally got you in here, brother. Man, yeah, it's been a long fight. What's happening, fellas? What's good? DJ Devine, How what's good? Ain't nothing, man. I'm doing what's fine, doing? bro. Cricket, what's good? What's up, Devine? What's up, Cricket? What's up, Brad? You are cricket. What's happening? I ain't making. <laughs> yeah, you are. At least tired. today you are. What's up, Brad? What's up, Divine? What's up, Chris? I'm sorry, I'm tired, man. Long <laughs> no, week, it's been a long week. Get old age, man. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. You could salute, salute yourself. Old age, man. You do you realize who you're talking to, right? Yeah, he knows. Yeah, Chris, you are Chris? talking to her. He yeah, is. yeah. What's up? Chris? I ain't making no noise, man. Old and old time. Just, just man. getting in from the country club. Right, yeah, this, just I'm getting sorry. in from the country so club, man. Trying to hold it down. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get back to this. Um, Devon, I want to ask you this. Oh, and I hope I didn't lose my thought on my question. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is, no, no, it's okay. No, this is good. I don't mind this. It's just I got so much to ask Devon because I'm trying to recall back when Devon and I uh, met and when we were talking and uh, it just was so much uh, good information that he gave. Oh, Let's get to the sound systems. And that's why Cricket is on here. Can you explain what a Bertha is, Divine? Because I keep messing it up, I know. And I heard there were Berthas and then there were another type of speaker. Am I right or wrong? Let, just, just correct me. You're right. Uh, they had a speaker called the Emerald. So okay. they had two, if you put two Emeralds together and you put the extension on the Emeralds, uh, they will be considered a bertha. Okay. All right. But normally a bertha is one big speaker. It has two 18 inch drivers in them and with an extender on it. Okay. You know, and, and I'm, and, and with all due respect, I hope that I'm explaining it right also because the twins was the ones who introduced the Bertha to hip hop. The disco twins. To, for me. Right. Okay. They was the they was the first one that I saw with a Bertha. You know, and I'm quite sure that this the speaker was out before and people might have used it for different um events, but they was mainly for clubs because those things was just just heavy. Right. You know. Cricket has cricket has something divine, a couple things that we use on one of their park jams or one of their reunion jams. And I was and then I saw a picture of a Bertha. 
And I think uh-huh. Cricket even said he was going to attempt to build one because we got Tony Tone gave us uh, some blueprints of birds. Okay. Okay. And then didn't didn't he give us a blueprints cricket? Yeah, I'm actually looking at looking at Brothers online right now. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, see, I'm cricket doing up. research probably talking. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's the correspondent with the research. So um, I couldn't lift him. Uh, I couldn't carry him. I couldn't, I couldn't lift him by so myself. Did y'all use a hand truck or anything like that, Divine? We didn't use Bertha's. Oh, y'all did? Okay, okay. We use all Vegas. All Sherwin Vegas. All Sherwin Vegas. Yes, sir. Now, now, now Chris Brooks. You remember serving Vegas? Yes, sir. That's who we had a DJ here divine okay. by the name of Lisa Washington in the early 80s. Lisa had two Sirwins in the house with 15s in them. Yeah, she had 15s in hers, though, you know, and everything. See, yeah, yeah, she people, had 15s in her. You you never forget that that orange rubber surround on them speakers, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, the, and, and, and the logo in the middle. Now, not to cut that off. But I, in high school, spending with Kevin Lewis, peace to Kevin Lewis, and, and rest in peace, my cousin Darren Phillips. When we used to go out to the West End uh, Community Center, they had built in shop class, Divine, a set of, let me see. I, you know what? Them cabinets might have been oak, but they had 18-inch PVs in them oh. back in the day. And this is... 81 through 83, like back then. Mm-hmm. See, I back had then, never in my and, life heard. And, and, and what just to go along with what Chris is saying, see, what we had here, Divine, back in those days, the people that had the mm-hmm. big systems was Kirby Carmichael with the Earthquake Funk Machine. He was a DJ on the station here, a legendary DJ here. Yeah. He had mm-hmm. Sam the Beast from the East. He even did records later. He's really big in Philly. And here, but Sam the Beast had a system, the Black Baron, Epps Disco. We had people like mm-hmm. that, a big wall of sound and big speakers like that. Yeah. You know? and, it, and it had to come from guys like y'all. And I'm just I'm just going to say it. It had to come from you all because every time we see anything with big sound systems, it was always Queens, you know, in the later years that we're finding out. So uh-huh. is that is that a do you think that's an accurate assumption at least? That is, that is definitely an actual fact when we when you're getting into the the later part of the 70s. Now, um, Brooklyn also had sound systems like Maboya, Plummer. These guys had sound systems also that was really heavy bass bottom. Um, but in terms of, I would say, hip hop, when when hip hop started to take preeminence over the disco and uh, the funk era or whatever, um, Queens because of the sound system that Goody put together, and it's because of the disco twins, because of new sounds, because of King Charles, all of us had great sound systems. So Queens was known for having the sound systems that uh that I could say Manhattan didn't have because Manhattan they didn't have any place to really store this stuff. You know, they played in the clubs and um, you know, the mobile DJs like the Crash Crew, um and the Treacherous Three and stuff like that. These guys was basically MCs. So they used to come and play on our sound system. You know, or they used to come to play in the clubs on the sound system in the clubs. But when you came out to Queens, you actually witnessed <laughs> um, great sound systems in the later part of the 70s. You know, um, and, 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 I'm not, and I'm not and I'm not afraid to say that that Infinity Machine from what I heard from people and from what I know what we had, we had the loudest sound system that catered to the hip hop crowd. And that's what I've heard. You know, I've heard that, you know, just, you know, when we heard about DJ Divine in an Infinity Machine, it was like Infinity Machine was up there. I think they said new sounds, then they said so cipher sounds solo sounds and i may be getting it all so just let me know if i don't have it in order but no. it was a, a, a lot of those people like david dmx had his his sound system he had equipment 
and uh-huh. stuff. So, but it, I always heard that Infinity Machine was that sound system. We was definitely the sound system for South Jamaica. And I say, and I can say this, and I'm and I'm proud to say that South Jamaica is is and was and will always be the mecca for hip hop for Queens. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, and I've, of course, the Disco Twins too. I don't want to ever leave Man. out the Disco. Oh, twins. oh no, definitely the Disco Twins. They had to come to Jamaica and battle us, you know, to 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 try to get the popularity that we had. But the Disco Twins was definitely popular in their area in Queensbridge and Astoria and so forth and so on. But our sound system was just a pretty thing to look at, man. Um, and when we when we bought, we, we really never bought out the whole sound system. The only time that I could remember bringing out the whole sound system was when we did Harfick Civic Center. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, when we came down to Virginia, we did a, a college. I think it was Virginia Union. Oh, so you've been to Virginia Union in Richmond. I, yeah, I mean, and then we went to the scope. We did the scope. Norfolk scope. Yes. Norfolk, right. So, Norfolk you know, scope. our sound system, we had enough sound system. We had enough speakers to f- fulfill that environment. So how did y'all bring, y'all, had a, y'all must have had a trailer or something to bring all that down here. When we, when we came down there, um, we rented a truck and then we put, the stuff in our uh, super van and our super van the way that we packed our stuff we was able to get four l48 four b36s uh four v32s in the amp rack so and we how did i miss that show how did i miss that one i i I, I, how did I, this, this must not have been advertised or something because I, I didn't hang on Virginia Union's campus. So, uh-huh. I mean, how did I miss that? <laughs> how did I miss that? I don't I understand don't it, man. I, but I did. Obviously, I missed it. But go ahead. I'm sorry to cut across you. So you all had really knew, had a system of, on packing the system in, you know, small vehicles or what have you or a certain size vehicle. Right. Right. We had we had a, a Ford super van. And with that Ford super van, we was able to fit. Like I said, four, eight, 12, 12 speakers and the amp rack, the JBLs and um and some horns. So with that alone, we could basically do any venue that that you know that held up to 300, 400 people easy. Wow. So wow. when we when we had to do stuff like uh the scope, then we had we bought four more earthquakes. And then we had a, a multi cell with a tangerine driver in it. And we, let's see, we had 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. We had 20, um, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24 JBL bullets. Oof. So, Man. you know, our sound system was like loud. You know, we, we, and, and it was some places that we couldn't. Um, bring all our stuff because they didn't have enough power in order to satisfy the amps. Yeah, the good thing what we have is that with Cricket, his system, he actually had a sub box, a sub panel that mm-hmm. he would plug in and, and what have you. I mean, he could go to now. Cricket, correct me if I'm wrong. You could go, you could go two forty or one ten, correct? Yeah, I, I could change it all to either one. Depends okay. on the building. Some uh, buildings didn't have two forty, so, but I can switch the end of it off, make it just plug it in, and make it two forty or one chain, whatever I need. He pretty much divine has built his own system too. He he, I mean, he actually sold some of his stuff because he went powered. But uh-huh. you know, I I understand you got to have a crew of guys to help you with that stuff. Right, right. And see, I always, he, did, he, I always did alone. And he's always did it by him. He did it by himself. Wow. Yeah. See, Twenty two cabinets. See, see, Devon, that's how we love hip hop down here. Same thing. You know, we, wow. we love it, you know, so much. Some of us have gotten injured doing this stuff. Not me, but he's yeah. been injured with his shoulder. I know another DJ that used to carry speakers by himself. He injured his shoulder, you know, and whatnot. We just, we will do anything to uh, have that power and to have that sound, man. We, we, we just do it. I mean... You know, we got, hey, you guys did it. <laughs> and, and I'm going to tell you how we did it. 
So when people knew that we was doing a party, people would line up in front of Goody House. Wow. You know, and, and they used to come help. But at the end of the night, <laughs> they, they gone. <laughs> they gone. They gone. <laughs> but but to get us there and we get there on time, you know, because they knew they, they was going to get in free. So we had more help in the beginning of the night than what we had at the end of the night. But we yep. always, always had the, uh, the true, the true, the true players of Infinity Machine that really, you know, that really stuck it out. So, um, I mean, it was long nights, especially, you know, unloading this stuff but we we have fun you know we always went to white castle after that <laughs> <laughs> oh no not the bubble guts place <laughs> yeah we oh my gosh yeah. man look when i was up there when i um uh the second time i went up there because i met you i believe no the the first time we went up there my son was with me and dave and i and my son uh we were filming i can't remember where we filmed that but uh we were at white castles in hollis we oh, went okay. there, the fa- oh, that famous cool. one in Hollis uh, that Run DMC always talked about. So we went there, and I warned my son. I said, all right, son, mm-hmm, be mm-hmm. careful. And Dave said, yeah, man, you don't want to order too much. My son was oh, one God. of them daredevils. He ordered a whole bag of them things, man. He tore them up. But, you know, it did not bother him. Okay. It did not bother him. So he was one of the few. <laughs> you know, me, I didn't touch him <laughs> because I remember what happened when I ate it at White Castles out in Jersey. And I had that. And I remember what happened, man. I stayed in the hotel the whole rest of the night. I, 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 I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, you know, and stuff. But those are the fun things that we remember, you know, about doing, you know, this thing we call hip hop, jams, rap, and just sound systems and stuff, periods. Everybody, this is Bravado Live. Thank y'all so much for checking this out. I can't see anybody on, on my panel here, but I see them on the phone. Hey, Shy, how are you? Great to see you. We were just talking about Epps Disco a few seconds ago, Shy. Hey, Avis. Hey, Langston. Hello, Marsha. Hello, Jonathan. What's going on, cuz? And uh, Chris, we lost Chris Brooks, and he was trying to come back in. So, Chris, if you're watching us, man, just keep trying, man. When I see you come in, I'll throw you back on, on here. But uh, I want to shout out to everybody. Shouting out to Jaquan. Uh, what's going on, Jaquan? If you want to tap in, just tap in, brother. I sent you the code and everything. So if you're able to do it, jump one in with us. Uh, the soul, uh, the hip hop historian, Jaquan, uh, he's, he's going to try to come in if he can and what have okay. you. But, but thank you so much, Divine, for being here, man, and, and just sharing, okay. you know, the history of what you all did because of what you did. We're doing it and stuff. Um, let me ask you this. Recording at Power Play and recording uh, some of the records, well, especially get into the mix, uh, I think I heard somewhere Spider D was saying that the drum beat was a tape loop. Is that no, true? It wasn't no, a tape loop. No, now maybe it, I got it wrong. I may have it wrong. Yeah, no. Um the the drum beat was played by Alan P. Um and he was one of the engineers at that time. And he played he played it on the Lin drum. Oh, okay. You know? Okay. So no, it wasn't it wasn't a loop. I mean, we I think that record getting to the mix was the most primitive way of making music that I could possibly think of. You know, all the scratches, I had to like scratch through the whole track and and get down, you know, and put the hots in, you know. Um, it was just, it was work. Like, not like today where you could just pull up logic and you could just put things right where you need them. and and get it done so quickly. Right. Um, and then splicing of the the, the, the quarter inch tape and Eli was a master of that. I mean, and then- <laughs> Eli Tubo, right? Eli Tubo. Yeah, I, I mean, met him too. Great guy, man, great yeah, guy. Great guy, smart man. And the, 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 when I look back at it, everybody was like on the board ready to punch out this or punch out that. Yeah. It was just crazy. It was like, wow. It was like, I look at nowadays and then I look at what we did to make that record. And it was just, just a, wow, night and day. Wow. I, I mean, it, 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 it was a big record here. Uh, get into the mix. I mean, you heard it in cars. You heard it in some of the clubs here. You know, you, you heard it on tapes. You know, that, that was, I remember I heard it. It was New Year's 84, I want to say. 
It was okay. New, Year's, yeah. New mm-hmm. Year's 84 when I heard it. A uh, guy by the name of Marvin Johnson in the neighborhood, may he rest in peace. He passed away not too long ago. He had a white Camaro uh, LT. And he had, he was an electronic technician. He put everybody's sound system in and what have you. And he had it playing. He picked me up at one o'clock in the morning. We were going riding. And he picked me up and he had that playing. That was the first time I heard get into the mix. And I'm like, what is that? He says, DJ Divine, get into the mix in the in Infinity Machine. I said, so I went to the guy, that, the, uh, the Junior Funk Machine was the group I was in at the time. And I went to Barry, Mad Mix, and I said, look, what is this record get into the mix? He said, I picked that up yesterday. Here you go. And I'm like, it was on West End, you know, and everything. And, mm-hmm. and you know, we did the instrumental. Then we played the vocals. You know, and everything. I'm like, yeah, this is the. And then next thing you know, you were hearing, especially springtime, you was hearing it in cars and everything. You know, it was a, it was a great record. It really was. You, you had Grandmaster Flash, Adventures on the Wheels of Steel, and you had Get Into the Mix from DJ Divine. You and know, you had, and, and you had Play That Beat by Wizkid. Play That Beat by Wizkid, exactly. You know, and, and the cra- it, you know, the crazy thing was like, I never realized the record was gonna go as big as it was they had it on hot rotation on wbls um uh chuck Leonard was playing it like four times a day and wow. here's the crazy thing i'm working in a record store selling my record and and people would ask me for autographs as i was selling the record you know i i just recently ran into this young lady and said divine you know i still have your record and and you autographed it for me i said really you know, and I thought that was like, that was so crazy, you know, and it, it it was a humbling experience for me because I, you know, it wasn't um, something that I was planning on being a recording artist. Spider just asked me to come in and do that. And I did it. And it turned out to be, like you said, a really good record. Chuck, Chuck, um, Chuck Chillout was telling me, yo, that record was fire, man. I used to play that. And, um, you know, he was mentioning that the, the Funk Master Flex wanted to meet me and, and all that. And I, I felt honored to know that the the record was much more bigger than what I thought it was. Right, right. To say the least, right. you know. Um, and Spider, I, I thank I thank Spider for that. You know, Spider was um, the man behind the whole scene, you know. And he was the one, I believe, that put power play on the map. Because right. Power Play didn't have, they had that one little studio room, the B room. And when I tell you this, this mixing board was like a mixing board that it's like, you really had to work. And then as time went on, Spider stayed in the studio and he worked with a lot of people, Eli and all these guys. But I, I never had an interest in that because I had, I felt I had my run with Infinity Machine. Right. you know doing that and and this was just a plus and then we went on tour i went on tour with spiders uh, jimmy spicer metal dini and you know and i'm meeting all these guys and they're telling me about how much that i influenced them so you know I, I trying to balance all this off at the same time and it was just a good feeling and like davy d you know and all these guys, they, they came up and they became, you know, well-known artists, recording artists, made records and hit records and so forth and so on. You yeah. know, I I didn't have a, a passion to do another record. I yeah. just, I, I, I love where I was at, you know. There was a record that came out, a compilation. Mm-hmm. It came out, I can't remember, was it, I, I saw it. I think it was smoking beats. Maybe it was something that Aaron Fuchs put out and your picture was on it and you did, you were like this and it had DJ divine and you was pointing and I, I didn't hear the song. So you only did get into the mix is what you're saying. No, I, I did. You did something else. I, I, that's what I thought. Right. I did a record with next plateau called excuses. And I did that with father Taheem. Okay. That might've been it. I think that's it. I think yeah. that's it. And yeah. also with Spider D, uh, place in the beat. Okay. You know, um, I did a little, little, 
little part in there, me, Sp uh, Sparky, and his brother Spider C, you know. So that was what label was that on? Was that on Next Plateau? That was on uh, Profile. Profile. Okay. Okay. Yeah. When when Spider was on, when Spider did Place in the Beat, when he did Profile, he was working with Profile. Okay. Know? Right, because that's when he had the Buckwheat record. Right. And, and all. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Right. It's Bravado Live, everybody. Thank y'all so much for checking out. I see everybody's chiming in. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate the comments. Appreciate it so much. Hey, Bethany, how you doing, Nisi? Great to see you. Hey, James, how are you? Uh, ah, Cricket. Yes, Jam sir. Mr. Jamalot's here and stuff. What's so, up, Jamalot? What's going on, Jamalot? He's another DJ, uh, DJ Divine down in Charles City, Virginia, that's outside of Richmond. He uh -huh. has a pretty decent sound system as well. See, a lot of the sound systems... Like I said, we got it from you guys. You know what I'm saying? At least I know I did. I know that, you know, we did. And even Sam would always talk about the beast. He was like, man, those guys up there had the systems. You know, you got to bring the sound system. And, you know, it, we're trying to get it back to that because a lot. Well, they're not the, the DJs that are out now. Are, they're not too many like what we did, you know, with the sound systems and stuff. It's not too many. Right. You got some, but not many. You know, like that a lot of them just go in these uh, small little venues uh -huh. and, and just, you know, playing clubs and things like that. It's not many of Lord, them the park jams and stuff, huh? Yeah, a lot of them buy a system too small for a building too big and blow the system up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they call me to fix it. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and see, that, that's one of the reasons why when we do ad jams, we like to bring the systems. Like even when we would go inside because of rain, we're going, it's a spot that we go into for rain. The first time we did a reunion, Cricket had all of this. <laughs> we had 15,000 watts in this small restaurant, man. We bought blue the windows out of that place. I never forget that. That was back in 17. And it's divine fault. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean go hard or go, hard go home. Yeah, and, <laughs> and we right. were we going hard. So we actually have another reunion we're doing on uh, May 4th. Uh, Divine, I'll talk to you a little bit more about that a little later. Maybe, okay. I don't know, maybe we can work something out to where maybe you and Kendu can come and stuff, uh, be a part of it with us. We, we can talk about it. You think that's something we can have a conversation about? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I don't mean I, I don't mean to put you on the spot about it, but you no, know, no, been, no. we talked about you coming down here before anyway. You know, and stuff. So, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that offline and stuff and see what we can do and, and whatnot. Because we do that at least we do two. We try to do two free jams every year uh -huh. at, the, at the park. And then uh, this year we're trying to go inside on a couple of places, too, to um, where we can charge admission and do some other things, have some special guests and th stuff like that. But we try to at least do the two free ones every year to go, right. just give back to the community and just. You know, do it for for you know for the love of it because that's what we've been doing at least in these recent years since we got everything back together. We've been doing it because we love to do it and just right. have fun and just reunite with people that we went to school with or people we hadn't seen in years and mm -hmm. um, and, and things of that nature. So you know that's why we do it, man. We we do it because of that. Now I know we've kept you a while. It's been forty four minutes, so I don't want to keep you long because we really appreciate your time and talking to us. Is there anything you want to say that you think people need to know, especially when it comes to Queens, hip hop, the sound systems, the park jams and things of that nature in the early days? Is there anything you want to say? Well, like I said uh, earlier, every borough was influenced by the borough that they resided in. There was no one person that influenced all the boroughs and all of a sudden it was a birth of hip-hop everyone had their own <laughs> particular style and everybody was influenced by their neighboring djs or and so forth and so on it wasn't something that was released and everybody gravitated to you know the world gravitated to us and that's what made us so great because everybody has something different to offer. And that's why hip hop in the early part of the 70s and the later part of the 70s uh, set, set a strong foundation. 
you know, for other people to come in and, and the next generation made it better and it got better and it got better. And the reason why I say it got better is because people started earning more money. If you start earning more money, then that means that you're doing something good for that particular generation. And now look at us, look where we're at, where we're at now. And you all always made money doing the, doing the jams that you all did. It, it sounds like it, that you, you all pretty much made it when you went out there, it was profitable to you. You were having fun, but you made your money. Um, <laughs> I can't say, I can't say, listen, I can't say we made the money that you're saying, but you know, it was, it was good for that time. But again, Goody was a fair dude. So if we did a party and we made $800 for doing that party, Everybody got part of that eight hundred dollars, but that so, that's eight hundred dollars back then. That's good, right? But how many that, of y'all was it? How many of y'all was it? Well, it, it all depends. Again, whoever came to the house, okay. Like, whoever came to the house. So sometimes we might have like six people. There you sometimes go. We might have <laughs> seven people. That, all that money is gone. You know, hundred fifty dollars a piece. Yeah, because again. <laughs> Money taken out, uh, the way we obtained the style system was Goody Father put money out for us. Okay, okay. Okay, and we paid them back from doing parties. Okay. So it would be money taken out for that. It would be money taken out for gas. It would be money taken out for tolls. And it would be take money taken out for everybody to have something to eat. We have a, a, a certain amount. So by the time for us to get paid. That's why it was it was a lot of love and passion, just like what you guys have to do this. It wasn't a, a lot of money. I really started making money when I started going on tour with Spider. Right. That's when I really started making, um, wow, ooh, $500? Oh, to myself. Right. $600? $1,000? You know, uh, depending on where we play. But the Infinity Machine era, it was love. It wasn't. It, it wasn't a lot of money that was being made as an individual. And I was a DJ. And I, I look. I moved. I moved the equipment. I I set up this uh, the sound system. I DJ. I MC. And not at any time I felt that I should have got more than anybody else. Right. Because Goody was fair. Right. And and, and that's what I love about him, man. Goody was fair to. Hey, even though I would <laughs> want it more, but hey, it wasn't more for me to get. Got you. you. Know? That's a good attitude to have, man. And after all these years, you still can speak great like that because of your experience. You you know, we've had our experiences where there were mm -hmm. a lot of low times, but I'm not saying y'all didn't have any low times, but uh -huh. it sounds to me that there were there were definitely more great times than yeah. low times. There were definitely, if if any at all, you know, as far as low times. So that's really, really, really good to hear. Now, Cricket, you yes, sir. who you are and with sound systems and stuff, do you have any questions for uh, Divine? I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, you you know, say that I, I should have asked him this and then we talk about it. So I need just with what you have and what they have. And, you know, we talked about these birthers and stuff. And he told us, you know, the correct way to actually have a birthday. Is there anything you want to ask, man? Uh, he actually he actually covered almost everything and you know with the money side of it i get it that's why i mostly did it by myself because mine was trust issues i didn't mm -hmm. trust people when it came to my money and i did it by right. myself I, yeah, I paid somebody to help me every now and then and um you got any regrets um divine any regrets yeah <sighs> we old now we old now and our backs hurt <laughs> yeah I, the only regret i have is that i wish i would have documented more stuff I yeah. wish I would have. I wish I would have had a little bit more passion about recording, you know. Uh, but um, other than that, you know, I was fortunate, and I got a job. I got a job in the post office right okay. when getting to right when getting to the mix came out, and my mother told me she said you could DJ at any time you want. Take the job in the post office, and it was the hardest thing for me to do, is because they had just called me to come to london to go on tour oh, wow. and they called me for the, Ask the questions <laughs> what you do so, 
Listen, I retired from the post office 38 years. Good. There's your so, question. There's your question. <laughs> okay. so, yeah. so that's what I did. You know, I, I you know, you honor your parents, honor your parents yeah. you know, with grandchildren yeah. you know, life. So I had to honor my mom's and she was right. Look, I'm here on the radio sto- show talking about it and still able to DJ and still, you know, and do a lot of things. So um I mean, Spider was a little upset, but he had Doc with him, and he did his thing, and he had his good run. And and if it was one regret, that would be like, what would have happened? But yeah. it would have it changed the course of my life from what I lived. And I wouldn't give that up for anything because through the hard times, through the good times and all that stuff, you know, I thank God for where I'm at right now. Absolutely. It's an honor to meet you, man. It's an honor to meet you. Yeah, and man, meet you. again, man, thank you so much for taking your time to You're talk welcome. to us because um, I thought I'd never be able to talk to you again in this medium uh, and whatnot. But I've, I'm actually going up there, coming up that way. My daughter's in Brooklyn. Uh, she lives in Brooklyn. So we're coming oh. to visit her next month. And uh, I was going to try to catch up with you sometime and then, you know, it, catch up with you in Queens because I, I know how to get to you. I, I, I know how to, you know, catch up with you. So I wanted to catch up with you then, but I'm glad that we were able to talk like this. And, you know, you educate us like you have, man, because um, like I said, you guys, you know, gave us a career. You gave us mm-hmm. a life. And I have to say it like that because it is part of our lives. I mean, hip hop has been the majority of our lives. Hip hop has been such a big influence and right. guys like yourself, and you know, Davy DMX, all of the all of you guys in Queens, Spider D, you know, Sparky D, you know, and then mm-hmm. just everybody, you know, and learning about I heard the first time I heard about Grandmaster Flowers was through Jalil. And oh, okay. whatnot. That I, I found out about him. But and then of course, looking at the uh, founding <laughs> father documentary, and everybody that's looking at this, please Google, I mean, go on YouTube and look for founding fathers. The documentary. Look at that documentary. Chuck D is actually uh, narrating it. But look at that. This is coming from those guys that were there. DJ Divine, one of them. The the guys that were there doing their thing. They were there doing it. So hey, check it out and and just be enlightened. I, we're, we're we're I'm enlightened more and more each time. You know we we talk like this. So thank you for that, Divine. Thank you very much. Any last words? Any any yeah. any. And, and you you know Grandmaster Flowers, he he never used headphones. He had a speaker for his headphones. So oh, wow. when he put the records on, he used to you could hear whoo, whoo, whoo. you could hear him moving the record back and forth. So you stand by the uh, turntables and you knew the next record was going to come on with "Love Is a Message" or something like that. And right. Then he'll let it fly. So it's it's a lot of questions that, uh, especially when you when you when you hear the record. Doo, 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 who who could say that somebody said, well, let me take that idea and put it out to the people and let people hear. And it could have been something that influenced someone to do scratching. Right. Right. Who's to say, you know, I mean, it's, it's so many things and, um, and I don't take none from nobody, but everybody is influenced by something. Right. Or someone. Right. You know, well, we're, we're, we're the example. You all influenced us. Absolutely, as a whole, definitely as a whole. What would you before we leave? What would you? What was the song of choice for y'all? Mm. I, for me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow! I love "Love Is a Message." I was getting ready to say that. I love that song. Um, a lot of people was telling me, "Divine, the way that you used to cut, I can't stop." And Edwin Starr, I just want to do my thing was just phenomenal and i i just love love is a message because it was so many parts that you get the horns and the you could just do so much stuff with that record and a lot of mcs such as chucky chuck he didn't like it because i guess it was too fast Mm -hmm. and um but love is a message i would say that is definitely i think that was the greatest song that was ever made besides good times Good right. Times was a song. Yeah. I mean, if you listen to one of the tapes in the Armory, when we did the Armory in 79, I think Good Times had to, they had to have that record on for about a good 45 minutes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and and see, that was the thing with us. We down here, you know, when it came to playing records, we played them because people wanted to, us to keep them on the turntable. Keep it on, yeah. Keep it on, especially you know we we a go go you know area down here. Mm. Trouble Funk dropped the bomb. It's a four album yep. set, and wow. we had to play one after the other, after the other. Your whole party would be Trouble Funk dropping the bomb. Yep. And yep. that could wow. be a, a couple of hours. You know, it, it was it was like that with us. We 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 so we know what you mean, but but love is the message is a, a New York anthem, just about you yeah. could say. I remember in the in the 80s when I was up there recording uh with the audio two and and the alliance and everything on first priority, I would be listening to BLS in the evening when they were going to uh up on the top of the hour, right at six o'clock, you hear love is the message every evening. You would hear it or, or Friday evening. I think it because I'd only be up there like about Friday evening. You hear love is the message. And to me, hearing that up there and just hearing it come across the station like that, because see, you got to remember down here, we had AM stations during when love is the message came out. We didn't yeah. have any FMs here in, in, in Central Virginia. <laughs> to okay. hear it like that come across an FM station for the first time, it 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 it, it, it sends chills up your spine you know that record just same thing with apache too apache also was, was one of those great records and 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 whatnot and you named a couple of others i can't stop and what have you so yeah but love is the message that was ooh, what a song what a song man i just, I just yeah. downloaded it uh, i, I would have gave it to you I got I, it. I just downloaded it. I just downloaded it. <laughs> you, you could play that for any any generation. Yeah. Yeah. Any generation. They'll dance to it. You know, any generation. It's just one of those songs, you know. Just one of those songs that I think that um has to be played for people that want to dance. If you want to dance, that's definitely the one of the number one. I think that that would be my number one song to play. Well, it was a it was a go to song for me. The last uh, reunion we did, um, I, I if you look at my page, you'll see back then I'm DJing, I'm mixing it and stuff. I'm doing it then because you know I, that's how I learned not only up there, but see, we're a reflection of what happened up there, and I try. That's what we do at reunions for to do that. You have a lot of DJs that just play the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, they want to get as many songs in. Uh, within the time that they're doing their set to me that's okay and to an extent but you gotta have it to where the record can breathe and what i mean by that is that you got to let it play some because people that, that's what gets get people to it's a feel-good thing and, oh. and and i can't see you feeling good when your favorite song the dj spinning your favorite song that he snatches it out you know right. after the after the first couple few bars and it's snatched out let it breathe some you know, I understand you you got to get your songs in your set, but you know, all the sets sound a lot of them the sets sound the same. You know, a lot of them do, but that's why we do what we do and and you know, we we're, we're proud of it. Yeah. Listen, Divine, thank you so much again. I thank you. I thank you for having me, you now, know. And uh we'll we'll talk about uh maybe we could get something happening down here, you know, for May 4th. We'll we'll talk soon. We'll talk soon. Okay. 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 Hey, cricket. Stay away from that two forty. Yes, stay away from that two forty or one. Whatever you just say, you. <laughs> with well, it just. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well. When, when you go to a a, a a a building, you don't know what what they got hooked up, what kind of outlets they got, and sometimes you get a bad ground on a one ten. I can just take. Well, Gemini's on here. He's an electrician. You you can just switch the plug out of my box and move a wire when I'm done. I'll be my own. Got my own breakers in it and. GFIs on it. It works great. <laughs> he's an electrician that's also. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Divine, he's an electrician too. So uh the thing of it is is that when we do our park jam, right. and it's we're under the um the shelter, up, under the shelter. Uh -huh. And what happens is is that the plugs, the plugs were what happened, Creek? One of the plugs was bad or something. Wasn't yeah, the outlet was bad. The outlet was, was the GFI bad. that was bad. It was, it was a GFI. We switched that sucker switched right out. out there, right then. No, no, we didn't cut no breakers off. We just switched it out <laughs> right there with no breakers off. And wow. then when we finished, we put the old one back on and closed it up. 
just mm. like as if we were tapping off the <laughs> light like, pole. Oh, we did it. I mean, <laughs> that's great. That's great. Like I said, we, that we got we didn't just get one thing from y'all. We got just about everything from y'all. So the thank got The job, the party got to go on. Got to play the party. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Again, DJ Divine, everybody. Thank you again for your time, DJ Divine. We'll be in okay. touch. All right. All thank right. you so much, brother. One love. All right, one. Bye bye. That's DJ Divine, everybody. Now, Cricket, you're you talking about a Bravado Alive. That was a Bravado Alive for the books yeah. right there. That yes, one. Sir. Is. And I tell you, I, I I I was really hoping he would come on. I was really hoping, but I knew I told him at the last minute this evening. So I gotta <laughs> thank him again because he took his time to talk to us yeah. and, and, and just educate us on you know what they were doing. You ready to get some birthdays now, man? <laughs> I'm actually looking at them. I don't know if I can lift them. I'm just kind of, I mean, <laughs> well, I, I'm obviously, looking at, I actually got to pull it up. I've, obviously, we're going to have to get some people to help us, you know, if we yeah. do stuff like that. I mean, it's just no way one person can do that. And, and he even said it when we, when he, we told him, I mean, you saw his reaction when you said that you did it by yourself. He's like, wow, you know, because, yeah. you know, we, we just got to see if we can recruit some people that will want to help us, you know, I mean, yeah. I, you I've know. had 20 something, 22 cannons by myself for years. I buried them, then I would have some help, but most of the time I did it alone. Yeah, man, that that's woo. <laughs> that's something. And 20 some speakers and 12 amps by myself. Wow, that that's something. That and really... hooked it up and broke it down. Yep. For years. I'm paying for it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna read some of these comments before we get out of here. Um uh, Marsha Sneed says, uh, backyard party. She's from up there, so she knows about them as well. Hey, Brad, hope all is well. My brother, Cricket Car still sitting. If you can find the time, he, I guess uh, John Carter was trying to, Jonathan Carter was trying to get you to do some work or something on a car yeah. or something like I, that. I don't, re I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 reach I, back I, out I, to him, John. Reach back out to him. Um, yeah, music, busy man. it was mu music that depicted, that depicted life and it was fun. Nice re recording. Good info. That's what John says. Uh, Langston Lyric was here. Hey, how you doing, Langston? My man Chip Douglas, Holland Park Hood. Uh, VA Tech, what's going on? Shy. Spoke to Shy Rogers. Is going to shout out Shy Rogers again. She used to be with Epps Disco. Avis, how are you, Auntie? Great to see you. My brother over in the West Coast, my brother Dino. Hey, brother. How are you? Thank you for joining. I'm glad you uh, checked it out, and I see you too. Thank you, brother. Love you, man. Uh, me and Jay Lang used Epps Disco System a couple of times. That's what John Carter says. Uh, yeah, Jamalot was on here. My niece, Bethany. Uh, Cowboy Reggie, what's up, man? Great to see you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Give me a shout out for the uh, NBC 12 piece they did on Z-Rock Crew Jr. Funk Machine, 50 Years of Hip Hop. Thank you. Buck Woodley, hey, how are you, Buck? Another brother that worked with the Black Baron. Uh, Tim Pusher, what's going on, man? Enjoyed the other night at your studio, man. Appreciate it. My cousin Sharita, how are you down in Atlanta? Great to see you. Thank you. Hey, Harold Davis, how are you, my man? Thank you so much for that deck, man. Thank you. And yes, everybody, the house sold in one week. One week. And Cricket, thank you so much for helping, man. You got, no you got us out of a jam, man, I tell you. And we're going to be doing a show about that, too, but not tonight. <laughs> and I will say this for that show, everybody. It may be the next Bravador Live or the one after that. But I will say this now, listen and view at your own discretion because it is going to be no holds barred about this show, about renovating a home and counting on people to give you a hand and people not finishing what they say they were going to do. And you paid them what they asked. So for that show, <laughs> you want to check it out, just be ready. And it's a disclaimer now <laughs> that it may be some foul thing said, but it's the truth. So just letting you know that. Thank you. Thank you, my man. I love y'all and still do. Thank you. We love you too, bro. Thank you so much, man. Ray, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much, man. I hope to see you soon, man. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, bro. Love you always, man. I hope to see you soon and stuff. That's my brother out on the West Coast. And when I was talking about my brother and – you know, I, I a lot of people, um, I had said it on my page some time ago, and a lot of you may know, know, a lot of you may not know that I found out I had two other brothers. Uh, Chip is my brother. 
Yes, Chocolate Chip is my brother, but I found out he's not my full brother. He's my half brother. I have no full siblings. I have half brothers. And um, that's fine, too, because they're still brothers. So I have two other brothers now. And one of my brothers is right on here, Song Garden U.S. That's my brother over in the West Coast. So um, I have another brother that's uh, up in Maryland. And uh, love them both. And we're getting to know each other. And that's a, <laughs> that's a whole nother show and everything. So, uh, yes, yes, I have three brothers now. I have three brothers and I do have a sister, uh, but I have uh, three brothers. So that's a it's a very exciting time for me. And uh, it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing. That's all I can say. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so that other show is coming. So y'all keep tapping <laughs> here and check. Crick is laughing because Crick is going to be on the show with me and he's going to contest <laughs> to a lot of the things that I want to say right now. But we just been on here for an hour and a, six minutes. So I don't I don't want to you know, stay on here too long and what have you. Plus, uh, it's Saturday night and. If you're going out, it's 838 right now. If you're going out tonight, please be careful. It's, it's still wet out there. It's soaking wet out there. Be careful driving. Please be careful right. driving. You know, and time stuff. go forward. And time go forward tonight. You know, that's crazy it's, that time is going forward so early. It was early last yeah. year. That's earlier this year. <laughs> then did you get rid of it and keep it, keep it like keep it um get rid of daylight saving time? Although I heard they what they want to do is keep it keep it daylight saving time all the time. They did that yeah, one, year. Like it, yeah. one year. They did yeah. that. I can't remember when it was a long time ago. They kept it just daylight saving time the whole year. And, yeah, I mean, the you know, dark too early. Right, 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 right. So uh, hey, cuz I got my cousin G on from the Ottawa Posse. Good to see you, G. Great to see you, bro. So I mean, that's that's. I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, you know, but yeah, it starts to So set your clocks up uh, tonight at two o'clock, everybody. So if you're out there partying at two o'clock, some of us at this age still are out there at two o'clock. Just remember, you got to set your clocks forward and stuff. So you lose an hour of sleep. I lose. I'm three. shopping for gear. I'm stuck. Oh, you're shopping for gear. See, DJ. Yeah, some, pass, some, pass, some passive gear. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I want to get one passive amp and two speakers because I've got a rollaway crate. I told you about cricket. It's in my shed yeah. that I want to use and just, and then we combine all that stuff for the fourth and, and yeah. man, that, that should be nice. You know, I I'm looking forward to that, man. Uh, y'all. And what I'm talking about is May 4th, the Z rock crew, junior funk machine reunion jam. We're going to do it again. May 4th of the Virginia Randolph. And, um, uh, we're going to have a special guest. We don't know who it is yet. Uh, it may be DJ Divine and someone else. So uh, you just never know. So we're going to um, definitely uh, let you know about that. And, uh, and and we only have, dog, we only have a couple of months, man. We only have, you know, to, next month is April. We're almost in the middle of March. Next month is April and then May, May 4th. That thing is really, it's less than two months away. Yeah. Yeah, it's less than two months away. So I, I got to get busy. We got to get busy. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're gonna have a nice sound bring, system out there. We're gonna have a nice. When, one. when we bring the double eighteens out there to sound? Yeah, bring the double eighteens. Bring them out there. What y'all right. think? Bring the double eighteens for the nice <laughs> booming bass. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna definitely All do right. that. Yeah, let's do that. Frank Mosby, hey man, how are you? Great to see you. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Well, cricket, yeah. been a great show. Thank you for joining, man. I appreciate it. Yes, Chris sir. Brooks, sorry, man, we lost you. I wonder if his his phone dropped out of power or something. Because we've been trying to get Chris on the show for the longest time. So um, I think his, his phone um, may have uh, dropped out of power because I don't see him on here. Uh, he's not even commenting. So he may have lost power on his phone and he's charging it up. But I'll give him a call later. But thank Cricket for uh, for joining us and stuff. Thank, DJ, D, thank you to DJ Divine again. I appreciate it. I'm a little excited now, man, uh, that we had yeah. him on and everything. So thank you all all for checking this out. I really, really appreciate it. Cricket, I'll holler back at you, man. I'll give you a call a little bit later. Yes, sir. All right, my all man. Right. All right. Thank you all again for being here. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great night. Be careful if you're going out. It's 842. Uh, I ain't going nowhere tonight. I'm going home in the house, and I'm going to uh, sit back and watch Star Trek tonight. That's what I'm going to do. Y'all take care. Thank you all again for being here. Bravado Live will return next weekend. And... Um, 
Just join us then, y'all. Tap in. Just keep checking back for updates about the Junior Funk Machine, z Rock Crew, the z Rock Crew Junior Funk Machine Reunion Jam, May 4th at Virginia Randolph Playground on Mountain Road in Glen Allen, Virginia. Keep checking for updates on that and who our special guests will be. Take care, everybody. Thank y'all so much for being here. Peace and blessings. One love. Bye. Bye.